and take a few deep breaths. And just allow the eyes to close. So when you connect to your breath, I want you to just envisage it coming through your nasal passage, deep into your belly. And when you breathe out, just allowing that belly to empty and the air to come back out through your nasal passage. So just a few breaths. <clears throat> Noticing your sitting bones on the chair or the floor, however you're sat this morning. Just noticing the temperature of your fingertips. Just try to soften your facial muscles, the area around your jaw. And just invite some softness there. And just take two more breaths where you are. Just deeply inhale. Soft exhale. One more deep inhale. Soft exhale out. And then when you feel ready to do so, just blink the eyes back open. And just notice how you feel. What state change came about just through taking a few conscious breaths. All right, so I hope you are armed with your pen and paper. I just um, want to, I guess, start with on a scale of one to 10. So this sense of just allowing you the opportunity to check in and see where you are in your daily life. So how often are you aware of being stressed in your daily life? Zero, not at all, 10, this is a big problem. So just have a moment now and think where you're at. Find that number, maybe write it down. And then how concerned are you about the quantity and quality of your sleep? The quantity and quality of your sleep. So if it's a concern for you, maybe you're up in the seven, eight area. If you feel like you're having the best sleep of your life at the moment, maybe you're at a zero, one or two. And then finally, how frequently do your emotions feel difficult to manage appropriately? So when we talk about that, that sense of when you're in having a difficult conversation or, you know, are you in a reactive mode or you're feeling like you are in control of your emotions and able to respond compassionately. Just have a moment now to think where you are. Are you a zero? Are you up in the 10 factor? Okay, moving on. So just to chat to you a little bit about a part of your brain called the hypothalamus. So when stressed, this is the part of our brain that really orders us and sends um, stress hormones into our body. It's also there to design to protect us. So that sense of having our fight and flight mode kick in. Um, but when it's in frequent mode, when it is in this sort of fight or flight stress mode for a pro prolonged periods of time, it can really bring about a devastating effect on our physical and mental well health. So symptoms of chronic stress, irritability, anxiety and depression, headaches, insomnia, poor immune function and increased blood pressure. They say that 70% of sleeping problems are uh, related to psychophysiological issues. So that's huge. As so much of our sleep issues are really up here in our head as opposed to the environment or mm, medical issues that we may be experiencing. So just to address the mood, the doTERRA mood matrix, and just to have a look at where you're kind of 
from what mood you are feeling or what you are desiring and how you can really find oils to work with you. Um, I know when we've done a class before, we've talked about how powerful it is to inhale um, a scent and how that can really have an impact on how we are feeling in that particular moment. So sort of the number one zone, they've talked about being in between fatigue and having no peace. And if you're kind of in that zone, you're looking for something to calm you down, then the oil of serenity is something worth exploring. It's really there to calm the nervous system and allow us to maybe find some composure in a difficult moment. Moving over to number two, where we're in that fatigue and lacking no passion, that sense of feeling like you just need a bit more oomph, maybe some inspiration, just needing a little bit more motivation with whatever task you're undergoing. Looking at something citrusy, citrus bliss is a really nice combination of different citrus oils. It's really invigorating, stimulating and motivating. Moving over to the third quarter, where we are feeling in coming into that stress mode and still not finding peace, then we're looking for something to really ground our emotions. So something like the oil of balance, which personally I love to use every single day, is a really lovely blend to ground, reassure and console. And simply just applying this oil to the soles of your feet every day will really allow you to just begin and start your day with self-care. And then moving into the number four, the final quarter, is that where you're feeling stress and no passion. So again, newly needing a little more support for energy, for inspiring, needing that encouragement, maybe a little bit of courage, then looking like um, diffusing an oil or applying an oil like elevation is there to really help support that. So there's a couple of things that I really wanted to share with you this morning as well. Um, oh, there is a really lovely sort of spectrum here where you can have a look at all the different oils to support emotions. So say you have woken up and you're really needing, I don't know, some peace. You feel like you really would like some um piece then there is a really uh, telling you to use balance as a sense of, of finding some calm and vetiver is another oil stated um, again which is a very calming and grounding oil so you'll find um, things that are generally the trees wood wood oils like cedar wood and vetiver are very calming on the nervous system so really good oils to apply there um, so this is a really good little um, wheel that you can buy at Essential Oil Supply. When you're starting to use oils to really support you with emotions, this gives you a really good guide of oils that you can go to depending on what you're feeling. So it has this really sort of brilliant um, states all of the feelings you know if you're in a sad place what oil to use if you're feeling fearful then you can start to apply oils to really release and support those emotions and you can go way more deep into this subject matter there's a brilliant book called emotions and essential oils which is a reference guide and it literally has all the oils in here that kind of you can work with to release um, emotions depending on what's going on in your life Another really good oil to work with when you are in that state of anxiety, um, feeling anxious, sorry, or just um, needing to find some calm when stress is arise arising in the body. So there's a new blend that you may have come across that came out maybe two to three months ago in the UK, and it is called Adaptive. And it's really there to design for all of those emotions that come up for when we're encountering difficulty in our life. And this comes in a 15 mil bottle and it also comes in a really handy 10 mil roller, which is brilliant to have so that you can carry around at all time. So the oils that are in this blend are wild orange, lavender, copaiba, spearmint, magnolia, rosemary, neroli, and sweet gum. So it's that brilliant combination of citrus, mint, and floral. It smells really good so you can use it as a pure fume but it's really there to help boost the mood. 
um, complements effective work and study. It's calming and releasing, um, and sorry, it's calming and relaxing aroma, increases feelings of tranquility, reduces the feelings of anxiousness and tension. So it's that sense of apply it topically to the web of your hand, to the base of your neck, to the shoulders, um, and maybe even to the temples if you're really having um, a stressful moment. But using oils to really take a moment in these in the times when you can feel that state change in your body when stress starts to come, or you can feel it around somebody in your family, just taking a moment to grab an oil and apply it or let someone smell it can really change the way that anyone is responding in a giving situation. So remember to use your oils as a little tool that you can, you know, go to every day to really support yourself emotionally. These are just some ideas of diffuser blends that you might want to work with when we coming into um, different emotions. As we um, have discussed before, the power of diffusing essential oils is really can change the mood that you're in or the mood of the room. So it's using different oils to really support the oil. Um, the emotions that you'll find uh, you are experiencing or somebody in your household is experiencing. And even if you are with somebody who's not into applying oils topically, you can, you know, set your diffuser going and it's a really beautiful way for them to be absorbing those um, aromas and feeling supported in that way. So the, these little, um, I'll send this after the presentation so you have it as reference. They just represent the different drops that you can put into your diffuser. And there's some really lovely blends for you to play around with. One other thing that I have found to really help me when I am having um, a stressful period is something called EFT, which stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. I don't know if any of you have come around um, to come to um, ever practice the idea of tapping. You can do your own little research on it, but the idea behind it is linked with Chinese medicine and it's um, sort of working on acupressure points that you would have if you were going to receive some acupuncture, but it's not using needles. So it's a, it's a, a technique that you simply tap certain parts of your body um, to really release the emotion that you're experiencing. Um, I have found this to work really well and it's something that again you can use your essential oils to help with whatever is going on so you can apply the essential oil to your fingertips and then follow the procedure of tapping and there are many videos online that you can refer to I really like Nick Ortner who um, is a brilliant teacher for emotional freedom techniques so if you know anyone or you are going through something yourself it um, I really, really recommend um, the tapping technique because it can really help regulate your nervous system, reduce stress and anxiety. So yeah, maybe check that out. You can do a little Google internet search. And again, once I've um, done this presentation, I'll follow up with an email and send you a couple of links that you can refer to of things where I have um, learned the technique but it's a really lovely way to use your oils in a way to calm your body. So moving on to kind of sleep and the quality of our sleep. And I think um, doing research for today's presentation and just the importance of sticking to a schedule, um, that sense of even taking the time to work out when, like how many hours are ideal um, for your sleep rest. Some are really are brilliant at seven, maybe your eight hours, but just making sure that you have a schedule so that you tend to wake up at the same time and go to bed at the same time. So just really finding rhythm in your body. And then of course, eating healthy, eating a well-balanced diet and really limiting the saturated fats and sugars and not eating too late into the evening will really help with the quality of your sleep. Screen time. So screen time is something that I think we can all be guilty of and that sense of even checking your phone before you go, go to bed. 
you know, the recommendation is to not have any screen at least an hour before bed, two hours is even better. And the sense of, you know, quite often we have our phones as our alarms or, you know, by our bedside table. So, you know, they've read so many things and evidence to support not to have your phone in your room and to really go back to old fashioned ways of having a clock in your room if you want to see the time and just taking that light out of your room. And then also to make sure that you're factoring in some exercise into your day, even some gentle yoga just before you go to bed, that sense of just doing some stretches and really releasing any sort of tension from the body as best as you can right before you go to sleep is a really nice way to just sort of set the body into rhythm for um, and deep and rejuvenating rest. So one thing that I have found to help me when I've entered a time where my sleep can be disrupted is Serenity Soft Gel. So I have this, I just thought I'd show this kind of little thing is where I have my bedtime oils and I just have them in a little pot sat on my bedside table. So they're always easy for whenever, um, you know, you need that kind of nighttime routine. And if I found that I've not slept very well for a couple of nights because the mental chatter is starting to take over, then I take a Serenity Soft Gel. So this um, is, um, let me just show you one so then you can see it. It's a tiny little veggie capsule and it has the oil of lavender in it. Can you see it's not very big at all? So um, oil of lavender and the L-theanine along with lemon balm, passion flower, chamomile to gently re um, promote relaxation and sleep. So if I found that I've entered a time when my, you know, I'm going through a period where I keep waking up, I've got that busy, busy mental activity, then I um, get a got into a habit of taking one to two capsules. So I don't do it very often, but you know, I think they're brilliant, a way to really support the body when the mind is racing and it will promote a really good night's sleep. And there is no sort of side effects. You don't feel that gro gro grogginess in the morning with other sleep support that you may have. So the serenity capsules relieve occasional sleeplessness, promote healthy relaxation and sleep encourage restful sleep, help make a difference in the quality and sense of ease of going to sleep. They calm the nervous system, help to reduce stress and help you get the refreshing sleep you need without leaving you feeling groggy and sleepy the next day. So maybe something worth um, investigating if you're, especially if you're a fan of the Serenity Blend, um, to put in your diffuser. Um, I do think the Serenity Soft Gels are there for just when you enter that point in your life when you need a little bit more support with your sleep and the quality of your sleep. And um, this is a really lovely um, roller blend recipe using all oils that are brilliant for bedtime routine. So the oil of frankincense, um, prized for soothing and settling the mind and eases hyperactivity. Vetiver. It's a natural tranquilizer and stops the mind chatter. So I really love this oil. This is the one that I found really changed the quality of my sleep. So what the oil is actually really quite thick. So I've changed the top to kind of have it in a pipette format so that I can simply just put one to two drops easily onto the soles of my feet and massage that in before I go to sleep at night. The oil of bergamot calms agitation and stress and is a natural sedative. And last but not least, Roman chamomile is calming and relaxing, soothes and clears the mind. So these are all really lovely oils that you can apply topically or maybe just put a couple of drops into a diffuser or you can make yourself a little rollable with all of these oils and use that to apply on your wrists, on the back of your neck and on the soles of your feet before you go to sleep. Very important to really get into a good um, routine for uh, bed, going to bed. I love this quote that I discovered in a book um, in today, which really resonated with me because you know I love to promote the act of self-care. 
Rest and self-care are so important. When you take the time to replenish your spirit, it allows you to serve others from the overflow. You cannot serve from an empty vessel. So that sense of just really taking the time to really take care of you before you go to rest at night. So some little ideas I've come up with, um, create beautiful rituals that work for you at the end of the day. So creating um, a nice routine, maybe running yourself a therapeutic bath and making a really nice soak for yourself. When you take the time to do this, you are clearing out toxins and you're also having that sense of when you're in that state of overwhelm, being in a bath of salts and essential oils can really calm the nervous system. So here is a little recipe for you to try out. One cup of sea salt, one cup of Epsom salts and half a cup of baking soda. And you add those ingredients into your bath along with eight to 10 drops of your favorite relaxing essential oils. Ideas are frankincense, lavender, clary sage, ylang ylang and cedarwood. Setting your room for sleep, so diffusing car calming oils, serenity, like serenity, lavender and cedarwood. So just getting into that habit of maybe having um, a diffuser on your bedside table and setting it to run an hour before you go to sleep. You don't even need to be in the room to just set it and let the um, room be um, full of the scent of the, ar the aroma of those lovely calming essential oils. Just make it so much nicer to go into your room and it smells of lavender and cedarwood, it smells amazing. And also getting into the ritual of applying the oils to your body. You know, those, po those points I've mentioned before, wrists, back of neck, soles of feet are really good places to apply the oil. So you're really getting to that point of soothing the body. And then having a breathing practice. So the reason why I put that on there is I know that very short meditation that we did at the beginning of our chat was just to kind of know and teach you how easy it is to put an oil, to breathe it in, and simply taking three to five deep breaths can really change your state. Um, but it also, if you find that you're in that sort of busy mind um, and just need that calm before you're settling into sleep, to so get into that habit of just taking some nice deep breaths. There is also a really good breathing technique called the alternate nostril breathing technique, which is there designed again to put into some balance into your system. So if something is out of whack, um, you know, busy mind again, busy brain activity, struggling to kind of take your mind of whatever's happened in the day to just press the pause button on that. Because if you bring your awareness to your breath and your breathing technique, you're automatically putting all of that mental attention onto something else and not worrying about what has happened during the day. So I'll briefly teach you this technique and it is when you take the index and middle finger to the place in between your eyebrows and then you're using your thumb and your ring finger to shut off nostrils. So we do this quite a bit in yoga, but again, it's another a very popular breathing technique um, to practice maybe before you do a couple of minutes meditation. So I'll demonstrate it. You put your index and middle finger between um, your eyebrows and you take your thumb um, to place on your right nostril and your ring finger it'll place on your left nostril. So you breathe in through your nose. Exhale all the air out through your nose. Close off your right nostril, breathe in through your left nostril. And then close both nostrils for a, just a brief moment and then breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Close both nostrils. Exhale throughout your left nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close both nostrils. Exhale through your right nostril. And you can practice that in your own time. 
but I can't tell you the profound effect it will have on your body and just through performing that simple breathing technique. It's known as the alternate nostril breathing. And again, um, you can refer to any guidance on YouTube to help if it's something that you want to get into the practice of. That completes your little um, talk for today. Next week is um, Women's Health and Hormones.